Hello, it's Scott Manley here. As you probably heard by now, Ingenuity, also known as the Mars Helicopter, also known as Lil Choppa, has chopped its last. On flight number 71 of 5, there was a technical problem that caused the helicopter to land early. And so to investigate the issues, flight number 72 was going to be a simple ascent up to 12 meters, which it succeeded. But then on descent back to the surface, contact was lost. And this is not the first time that they've lost contact with Ingenuity. So Perseverance went into careful listening mode and it was able to hear the weak signals of, in of Ingenuity and uh, able was able to then re-establish contact and then download images and send them back to Earth. And that's when it was seen that the image on the nav camera showed that one of the propeller blades had pretty much been damaged about, you know, three quarters of the way out. Now, to be clear, this camera is looking down, it's looking at the shadow, but it can see that the blade is truncated. Since this uh, original image, we've seen a few more images downloaded, and they, as the sun moves across the sky, the shadows have moved, and we can see that both of the rotor blades have lost a significant chunk of the outer tips of their blades. And this really is the end for Ingenuity, because you can't really spin rotor blades at the speeds needed to fly at Mars when they are not perfectly balanced, as everything should be. No, if they are not balanced, you're going to get horrific vibration and the vehicle will probably be uncontrollable. So Ingenuity's final flight took place in a region called Naretva Vallis. This is an ancient riverbed which float, where a river flowed in on the west side of Jezero Crater. Uh, it cut through these very large mountains. And this river, of course, then spread out and formed the delta, which has been explored by Perseverance over the last few years. So this region actually presented a sort of new type of terrain for it. Uh, so back before Christmas, during November, uh, Ingenuity basically didn't fly because the sun was aligned with uh, Mars and therefore they couldn't reliably get radio signals through. But at the start of December, Ingenuity took off and it flew over to what was called Airfield Chi. You see, the airfields were originally given designations from the Latin alphabet, and then they were using the Greek alphabet. And by the way, there's only two letters after Chi, and I don't know what was next. I would have liked to have seen some hieroglyphics. So anyway, from this point that was established in the riverbed, it made some excursions to scout different regions, including Flight 69, where it set a distance record. But it wasn't a distance in a straight line. It was an excursion out and then a return back to the landing site. Flight 70 then headed westwards into much larger dunes and Flight 71 was supposed to go even further out and then it had a problem. And many people are hypothesizing that the relatively soft dune type terrain that it was flying into may not have been the best thing for the navigation system on Ingenuity, which was centered around a visual a camera system which would identify features and use that to estimate the vehicle's orientation, location, speed and everything else. Regardless, whatever happened, the vehicle came down and the rotors touched the ground and the speed they have to spin uh, you know, the, it was not going to be survivable. We knew that before they even began flying this thing. Now, if you look in this post-landing image, you can actually see a trench on the left side of the image, which leads up to where the foot is. And I think that's just because the vehicle has sort of landed and moved sideways, or it landed and then the blades hit something and it pushed it sideways. Now, for the navigation cameras that are lower resolution and look straight down, it's not clear to me that any of the other landing legs made such disturbances on the surface. So that may well be the point of contact. The navigation camera also confirmed that the second blade is broken too. You can see the break in the top left. Since Ingenuity uses two rotors at different heights, I had sort of hoped that maybe the upper rotor had escaped damage and maybe there was some science you could do by spinning it, spinning it up and like blowing the dust around. Ingenuity is damaged, it definitely can't fly, but maybe there's some research it can do for a sufficiently... Uh, you know, resourceful scientists. I mean, there are actually people that studied the dust that was kicked up by the rotors. But that's not going to happen with the offset center of masses. Those blades are going to cause the thing to shimmy around like a washing machine and a trampoline with a brick inside it. But maybe that is of scientific value. I mean, first of all, the cameras are fixed to the body and the only way to turn them is to move the body. And just because you can't control it doesn't mean that you're not going to actually get something useful. 
or maybe just spinning them up will shake around that foot and it'll expose something interesting underneath the surface. But look, this is all kind of silly. Really, this is me and a whole bunch of other people out there being emotionally invested in Ingenuity, the little helicopter that could, that has got up to flight number 72 of five, right? This massively eclipsed what it was expected to do, and it has definitely changed the outlook for Mars exploration going forward, showing that flying machines are absolutely viable. If you weren't around at the time when Pathfinder landed on Mars, there were a lot of people that were skeptical about the concept of having a rover on Mars. But in the last 10 years, people were surprised when InSight was a lander rather than a rover. So Ingenuity landed as part of Perseverance in February of 2021, and about a month later, it was deployed from the bottom of the rover. The rover then retreated to a safe distance, and uh, the Ingenuity began performing flight tests. Initially, it just went up and down, and then it went up, and it translated across, and eventually it flew to a new location. And then it kept on flying, finding new locations and pushing out its capabilities. The longest traverse, the longest one-way flight was in April 2002, which was a 704 meter, 2300 feet transition across the surface at a five and a half meters per second. The longest flight was 169.5 seconds, almost three minutes. The primary limitation you might think was the battery power, but it actually turned out that the limitation was the motors which would heat up and because the Martian atmosphere was so thin they couldn't get rid of the heat quickly enough and they would eventually exceed their operating temperature and the aircraft would have to land. But the limited power by that single solar panel did constrain Ingenuity's operation and it wasn't able to scout ahead as a lot of people had imagined and part of the reason for this was that Perseverance was a much smarter rover and could drive a lot faster autonomously. In fact, if you look at the statistics, Perseverance has traveled further over Mars than uh, Ingenuity did. The difference is Ingenuity had a total flight time of less than two hours. It could travel half a mile in a few minutes. And of course, it could fly over terrain that Perseverance would have to go around. So it was able to keep up with Perseverance, even though it wasn't able to travel as far. While Ingenuity was able to massively exceed its original design goals, its uh, last few years of flight haven't been without problems. Early on in Ingenuity's travels, it uh, had a problem on flight number six, where partway through the flight, it began to oscillate back and forth uh, before safely touching down. This kind of control instability could have led to the helicopter crashing, so they grounded it until they solved the problem. And what it was, was the navigation camera occasionally would drop frames, and if it dropped a frame, the timestamps on every subsequent frame would be wrong. And those timestamps are needed to synchronize the image data against the IMU data. So since those were all out of step, the thing was getting confused. One of the things that was causing the navigation images to be dropped was the color camera was a 13 megapixel uh, camera and it put a lot more load on the image processor. So when it was taking photos, there was a chance that it would steal enough resources that the navigation image wouldn't get processed in time. So for the next few flights, they never used the color camera until a software update was developed and delivered before the ninth flight. At the start of 2022, Ingenuity earned the dubious distinction of being the first vehicle to have a flight delayed due to weather on another planet. Now, as you can imagine, the dust storm obviously reduced the solar power available, but actually, more importantly, the dust absorbs heat and it passes it on to the atmosphere. So the temperature rose and that meant the atmospheric density dropped. And so with lower atmospheric density, that meant that they had less uh, you know, thrust from the rotors. By the middle of 2022, they were dealing with Martian winter and uh, the vehicle just didn't, didn't have enough power to keep itself warm at night. So they changed settings and allowed the helicopter's electronics to cool down more and there was a real risk that this could cause a failure that would end the mission, but it survived. It did, however, lose its inclinometer. That's the device that was going to tell it how steep of slope it was sitting on. Without that, they could still use the accelerometer in the IMU, and so they had to make a software update to make this happen. 
So Ingenuity survived winter on Mars and continued flying, scouting ahead of the rover. In April of 2023, it made flight number 52 out of a communications range, and they expected to get communications back sooner, but the rover then went off in a slightly different direction because the science was more interesting. It would be over two months, late June, before they finally got back in contact. And then Flight 53, immediately after, they had a problem which triggered the Land Now instruction, which was again related to the imaging subsystem being overloaded. In October, they would make a few flights that were pushing the envelope. They flew it up to an altitude of 24 meters, and in another flight, they flew it at a speed of 10 meters per second, 36 kilometers per hour. And then as we went into November, there was, of course, the solar conjunction, which shut down communications. No flights were made. December, they started flying again, bringing it to the final location. And then, of course, the end of the mission. One question that I often got asked was about the navigation images showing the different shading between the shadow of the body and the shadow of the rotor blades. People asked, are the rotor blades transparent? Is that why the shadow is less dark? And it turns out that this is actually related to the design of the camera, which uses an electronic shutter. The electronic shutter is supposed to only make the sensor sensitive for the moment when the electronic shutter is activated. But it, it turns out that what it really does is it makes it more sensitive, massively more sensitive when it's open, but it's still actually slightly sensitive. So the moving rotor blades, there is still some light coming through from the point when the shutter is supposedly closed, but light is still leaking through. Whereas the body, it's not moving fast enough in the frame for that kind of effect to happen. So Ingenuity's flying days are over, but its legacy will live on, and I hope to see some more flying vehicles on Mars sooner rather than later. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.